Okay, I want to show you one of the forms that I created using Google Sheets and a couple different tricks that I'll be doing related videos on for how to do. So here is roughly what the students see. So this is in place of a worksheet. So use the textbook to answer the following questions, page 618 to 623. So first question, do fundi do photosynthesis or respiration? They only have two options, either photosynthesis or respiration. If they try to type anything else, like IDK, and it's going to say the data violates the rules of data validation that I've set up. Please enter one of the following values, photosynthesis or respiration. So they only really have one. And I am not going to be putting in the correct answers. I'm just going to show you how you only have certain options here. Now, when that one question was answered, you'll notice that the drop-down arrow disappeared, the cell went from yellow to green to show that it was completed, and it also popped up the next one. So here I put in photosynthesis, and that little reminder has disappeared. The next one, are fungi autotrophic or heterotrophic? So again, I'm just randomly picking stuff here, but I only give them those options. Now they have two questions that are essay questions that they need to answer from the book. So one positive effect and one negative effect that fungi have on homeostasis. And this gives them a little bit of room to type in there. And so you can see it also turned green to indicate that they have completed this one. One negative effect. So here it's just showing that they've completed all the book questions. But I set this up where it has this little number here that is a clue for me that they have three questions here wrong. Now, of course, they could game the system and, you know, get them all wrong and then go and see how this stuff does it. And obviously this is moving it from the wrong answer to the right answer. But at least in this case, it's forcing them to get the right answer. Think of it as like a pre-lab that's making them get the answers right before they can be done. Now, once they were done here, it said up here, have you read the pre-lab yet? And the pre-lab is a document that I have linked right here. If you click on that, it's going to take you to what we actually have set up for what they're going to need to know for our pre-lab tomorrow. So I can have them read it. But then back in here, once they say yes, they could no, won't do anything. Now it's going to ask them questions about this lab. So what's the fungus? Yeast. Will we be looking at photosynthesis or respiration? And that's right off of here. Now when it's going to be respiration, select the correct equation, and I'm going to be pulling it off of one of those two options. They have to pick the right one. That's the respiration. What's the food source of these options here? Glucose, oxygen, water, CO2, or uh, ATP? Correct answer is glucose. What will the bubbles it produces be made out of? Those are actually going to be carbon dioxide. How will you know how it's eating? How fast the bubbles go? And this is where they have to make a hypothesis. As a group, what conditions do you think will produce the most bubbles? So pick a type of sugar, powder, granulated, or brown. So I'm going to pick brown sugar. What amount of brown sugar? Notice that this relates to that. If I change this, that will also change. What amount of powdered sugar? Well, let's do triple. And what temperature water? Now let's do cold water. Now all the pre-lab questions are done, and I can come by and just look at their screens and see everything's green. That means they've answered it all, and I don't see any flags here indicating that they have wrong ones, at least on these easy ones. Obviously, they could be writing, you know, garbage in the essays, and I'd have to grade that manually. This isn't a perfect solution, but it's definitely one thing. Now at the bottom, down here, it's hard to see, I have another tab open for trials. And here's where they're going to enter data. Now, in this first one here, it's a control run, so I'm only going to give them the options that they need to have for the control run. Granulated sugar, normal amount, and hot water. Then they're going to enter bubbles, and I'm just going to make up some numbers here just to show you how this is going to work. Now, if they actually try to do this where they compare it to the original and they try to do the same thing as the control, they did granulated sugar, normal, and hot water, it's set up to say you need different conditions from the control. Try again. Do, let's say, cold water. So now we're just comparing that. Number of bubbles. So I'm just going to finish filling these out. So I've made all those different uh, numbers up here, but here you can see it's generating a graph. While they are waiting for that, what do you observe is happening? In this way, I could look at this and see and know that they're done. And they couldn't have set up anything exactly like the control without a warning. You'll notice down here that it not only uh, has the graph, but it also says the name. Cold water and normal granulated sugar. Hot water and double granulated sugar. One other thing that I'm uh, able to do with a feature called concatenate, I can change what goes on down here. So this one was the third trial, granulated, normal, and cold. If I was to change that to from normal to triple, that is also going to reflect that change. So they can look at that graph and get the data.
And then finally, we have the conclusions. So summarize your graph. So I'd want them to draw back and say, oh, I saw the most at cold water and triple granulated sugar. And of course, I'd be looking for a little bit more than this, but this just gives you an idea. Now here it says, you predicted that you would see the most bubbles with cold water and tripled powdered sugar. How well did your prediction hold up? And if I go back to the pre-lab, you'll see that I actually pulled exactly what we did. Cold water and tripled powdered sugar. So here it is in our uh, pre-lab, cold water and tripled powdered sugar. So it's actually going to be pulling that. And if I was to change this from hot wa cold water to hot water, it's going to reflect that as well. Obviously, I don't want them going back and changing the hypothesis, but this question here will reflect what they had. So we'll say that that prediction did good. So what conditions gave you the most number of bubbles? And then here I can see that was cold, tripled, and granulated. And what conditions gave you the least, according to my graph? Hot, doubled, and powdered. So why was the yeast eating the sugar? Again, another essay question. I'm just going to type something in there. Now, what were some sources of error? It's more important to recognize that you made mistakes rather than pretending you didn't make any. So I'm looking for another answer there. I'm just going to speed through this. Were the overall results what you thought they would be? Yes or no? And if they say yes, the question becomes, what were you most expecting to happen that did happen? However, if they say no, it's going to give them a different question. What surprised you most? So this is the power of this little uh, spreadsheet that I've worked up, and I'll be putting out other little videos for how to make something like this. It's only about four or five little tricks that I've stacked all together.